I wasn't trying to hide from you this morning. I thought I measured right, but I didn't. <laughs> Business meetings should not be boring. They should be fun. So I want you to help put some fun into this meeting today, okay? We're going to have an inspirational thought by Susan serving as an area director and every area director and former area governor deserves a round of applause because we know that is a job to do. So thank her. Susan is an advanced communicator silver and advanced leader bronze and she will inspire us at this moment. Welcome, Susan. Susan. Sue. Sue. Hassel Wanter. As I was driving here this morning, I had one thought. Man, this is a long drive. <laughs> when I walked into the back of this room, I had another thought. Mother of Pearl, what did I agree to? <laughs> this is a big room. But I had plenty of time to think of what I was going to say. And I thought about my home club, Fox Valley Coastmasters, Yay! and our last meeting. There were three members in my club that inspired me. One was Maureen, who the week before had come back and after having 20 ums, on her speech said, I've got to get better at this, and signed up to be Toastmaster for the meeting. I think about Maria, who's been away for a little bit, but she said, I have to make getting back to Toastmaster a priority. And she signed up for Master Evaluator. And third, into our meeting walks Pete who has not been a member for three years because due to job obligations, he moved out of the area. But what was one of the first things he did when he came back? He got, found out where Fox Valley Coastmasters currently was and came back and is going to transfer his membership to the club. I was inspired by all three of these people because it reminds me why we are Toastmasters. Because we came here because we wanted to be the best we could. Because we all want to soar on wings like eagles. Thank you, Susan. We as Toastmasters know that sometimes things happen and we have to step up, lift ourselves up to help out. Joan Moore was scheduled to give the inspirational thought, but had a death in her family. That's why she is not here, and Susan graciously stepped up and said, I will. Thank her. Next, we're going to have the reading of the district mission by none other than Distinguished Toastmaster, Mr. Bill Morrell. I hear that Toastmasters have some captivating communicators. Can you amen? Amen. I hear that we have some legendary leaders. And we have some excellent people with terrific teamwork. Come here, yeah! So for a moment, let me, though, 
those skills. I have a team. Team, go ahead and stand up. We're going to read the District 30 mission statements in sections. After each section, we'd like you to repeat after us with your great big Toastmaster voices. So all the South Side and North Side can hear us. Are we ready? Yeah. The District 30 mission statement. We build new clubs. We build new clubs. And support all clubs. And support all clubs. In achieving. In achieving. Agenda, correct? 
Is there any question? No questions? Any corrections? I have a correction. There's no number 16 on that agenda. I don't know how to count. And also, I must really apologize. I know how to spell the name Glenn. It's either with one N or two. And I put Jen, G-E-N-N. -N. So I really want to apologize to Glenn Reed. And guess what? I proofread that, so that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> so if there are no corrections other than mine, the agenda's adopted. Give me an applause for that. Anytime everything goes good. <laughs> of the appointed officers. Can I get a motion to appoint, I'm sorry, to confirm the appointed officers that were appointed for 2015-2016? The list was sent out in advance. So move, Madam Chairman. Can you state Actually, I need a motion and then I need a second. I need a motion. Move to. Okay, I saw your hand first. The chair recognizes. Sarah Henry, Aaron Assistant Director, 35. Uh, I move that we we adopt the confirm. confirmation of the appointed officers. Is there a second? Is there any discussion? It has been moved and seconded that we will confirm the appointment of the officers for 2015-2016. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Again, the motion passes. The eyes are open. Next, approval of the spring council minutes. The minutes of the spring council meeting were distributed in advance. Are there any corrections to those minutes? Chair recognizes. My graphic, the trade masters. I move that the minutes be amended to strike the summaries of campaign speeches which should not be part of the formal record of the district. The campaign speeches should not be included in the minutes. Is there a second? Chair recognizes. Is there any discussion? The chair can barely see, but recognizes. I saw a hand. Kevin Gaynor, you can't hear. I'm sorry? You can't hear. The motion. You still can't hear? The motion. The motion. Oh. I'd, I'd rather Mike restate the motion. I'll try to use my Toastmasters voice. I move to amend the minutes to omit the summaries of campaign speeches. The campaign speeches should not be part of the official record of the district. And then we asked for a second, and that came from? LaShonda Milton, South Division Director. I second. And then I asked for any discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Wonderful. That motion passes, and we will amend those minutes. Give us seven o'clock, please. Next up is the report. Oh, sorry. Pardon me. One second. Learning parliament, parliamentary procedures here. We now have to approve the spring council minutes. So, so I have a motion to approve. Tiffany um, Slinkle Howard, Niles Township. I move that we approve the minutes from the spring. 
And is there a second? Chair recognizes. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion passes. <laughs> now we will have the report from the audit committee. Audit committee member Glenn Reed, who I humbly apologize to. I'm not a DTM yet either, so it's too late to fix that. Well, I'm competent. No, I'm actually a, a advanced communicator bronze. Yay. All right. District leadership, fellow Toastmasters and guests, why do we do an audit? And I'll make this brief. There's three main reasons. We want to make sure our financial records are timely and accurate. Also, we want to make sure we follow proper policies and procedures, and we want to finally make sure that we ensure that we are acting in the spirit of a federal not-for-profit. We conducted a year-end audit for the fiscal year July 1st, 2014 through June 30th, 2015, on August 22nd with an on-site review. Our chair was Elizabeth Pittlecow, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. Also, Richard Gillerstead, Brian Shields, and myself. And the audit report was sent to Toastmasters International on September 9th. We reviewed 100% of the district's transactions, and there were three findings. First, that District 30 Toastmasters was paying full price vendor fees for PayPal which is not a good thing, we should get the nonprofit discount. So the outgoing treasurer, Ellen McCullough, worked with the incoming treasurer working, and they worked out with PayPal to get us the not-for-profit discount, effective August 26, 2015. Second, four voucher payment requests contain individual items over $500, which according to policy, need to have pre-approval. And while these voucher requests did have uh, proper uh, approval, uh, they did not have pre-approval. And the audit committee reminded district leadership of the pre-approval requirement and no further action is required. Third, one expense item for a hotel down payment was accidentally reimbursed twice and for the 2015 fiscal year, but that was paid back on July 23rd, 2015. No further action is required. I'd like to thank the district leadership for their diligence on our financial records. And I, on behalf of the committee, I move that the report of the audit committee be approved. Are there any questions on the audit committee report? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion to open it. Got a hand up. Where I did it. I'm so sorry. Sorry. Chair recognizes. Utia Lawal, Area Director, South 56. I'm looking at the audit report in the handout, and the date is July 23rd, 2016. Is that an error? Yes. That's a typo. We'll correct that. Could someone point out the year we uh, incorrectly stated uh, 2016 should be 2014 in your uh, handout? Are there any further questions on the committee report, the audit committee report? Those in favor of the motion to approve the report of the audit committee, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, say no. The ayes have it and the motion is adopted. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is the adoption of the district budget. And here to present the district budget is our 
finance manager, Brett Anderson, advanced communicator silver, advanced leader silver. Brett Anderson. Thank you, Madam District Director. Council members, fellow Toastmasters and guests. In our packet this morning, we have the budget summary for the proposed budget for District 30 for 2015-2016. Trying to get the presentation up on the screen here. All right. I'm going to walk you through the budget presentation this morning. The first thing that I want to draw your attention to is looking at our if our budget is balanced. And what that means in Toastmasters is when we look at this, the corner of the budget in the, the bottom right hand corner of this particular budget, if I zoom in, we look at, at the various organizations if our budget is balanced, if our, if our nonprofit uh, organization as ourselves, we look at our starting balance, what we start our year off with. And, and this year we actually started with a rather large sum of money. Uh, we actually have to leave a reserve amount that we leave our next administration. This particular year, uh, we, uh, the last administration had a large amount that they left us over and above what they were required to. Uh, just because they didn't spend against the, the budget last year. So we actually had a large amount that we're actually starting this year's budget with. But you start with your starting balance for this for the particular year. You add to that your expected revenue for your year, and then you subtract from that what your expenses are for the year, and then you have to leave, like I said, an amount for the next administration. And so in our particular organization, the idea is that we should be using the revenue that we get during the year uh, for the programs within the district to grow the district uh, for the benefit of our members. And so the goal is, is that we should have, if we have a balanced budget, to be at zero. And so uh, taking everything into account. In terms of how that looks on a picture basis, uh, the left side of the screen is looking at things, uh, income coming in. So the green is our starting balance. Uh, the blue is our budgeted income for the year. And then the balance side of that is what is our budget expenses for the year and then what we have to leave for the, for the next administration. And then what we have to leave is, is set by Toastmasters International. So in our budget, we actually have more budgeted expenses in our budget than budgeted income. But the reason for that is because we had such a large starting balance uh, going into this particular Toastmasters year. The second area that we look at in our budget is, and looking at the, the bottom portion, and just zooming in on that, is how do our particular spending categories within our budget line up with Toastmasters International policy in terms of, of making sure that we aren't overspending in one particular area of our budget. And so Toastmasters International sets limits as to where you can spend uh, the budget overall. And so in, as far as like conferences, fundraising, uh, district store marketing expenses, Toastmasters hasn't set particular limits there. But as far as TLIs, education and training, uh, travel, those types of expenses, Toastmasters has set limits on our particular budget. But in terms of where our funds are distributed across our budget, we are within the Toastmasters policy as far as how this budget is laid out for this particular year. Just looking now at how our, our revenue looks, uh, and this is comparing, the green is our budgeted revenue for this year, comparing our revenue actuals for the past two years. So our membership revenue is set by Toastmasters International. That's a return to the district of the membership dues that you and 
and our, our fellow members of the district, a portion of the membership dues come back to the district for, uh, for us to use in the district. Another source is the conference revenues that we receive. We also get some revenue from TLIs uh, and some revenue from the district store. And then there's a little, that other category was basically that payment that the audit committee had mentioned that had to be returned to us for over, over payment last year. So pretty much everything is, is fairly in line with what we've seen the, the past two years within the district. In terms of our expenses, just looking at that across what, what's our budget expenses compared to the last two years, again, our conferences, TLIs, district store. Marketing is, is probably where we spent the most amount of money. And marketing was the area where last year uh, spending was below budget. So that's why you see that blue bar so low is because that's why we have a, a large amount of money that we started the year off with. It's because marketing is the area where spending was not on last year and last year's budget. But uh, as far as where things were budgeted last year, the marketing budget was, was considerably higher. In terms of where we spent money in marketing, about a quarter of that budget is for new club growth and retention. A quarter of it is for membership growth. A quarter is for recognition events, uh, recognition opportunities like the red carpet, those types of initiatives that we do. And a quarter was set aside for area and division budgets. And then we have other areas like communication and PR, education and training, our speech contests, so the, the trophies and things that we do for our area, division, and district speech contest. We have some administration costs and then travel costs. Uh, there is uh, travel budgets uh, set aside for reimbursing a portion of the, the travel costs for uh, the district office, as well as for the keynote speakers that we bring in. So just looking at the total revenue and the total expenses, looking at uh, the past few years, again, total revenue, Pretty much the same that we've seen the last few years. Expenses, if last year's expenses have been against uh, up there against budget, that would have been in line as well. So that concludes the, the budget. because of the, the size, the printout of the detailed budget. It would be up to the district director if you want to post the, yes. the detailed budget. But she says yes, so we will post that. Any further discussion? All those in favor of adopting the budget, the district budget, 2015-2016, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. Eyes have it. The motion passes. I'd like to make a quick announcement. It's been said that people in the back cannot hear the motions being made up front. So there is a microphone up here. If you have a, a motion, walk to the microphone. Therefore, everyone can hear. Good? Thank you. Wow, you're for a double treat. <coughs> We're going to have the finance manager's report, and that will be presented by <coughs> Mr. Brent Anderson. Yet again. Hello, Brent. Thank you, Madam District Director. I'm going to break up. 
One thing that I will note, if you are looking at the numbers that are in your packet, uh, those are not the numbers that I am presenting today. I am presenting the report that was sent out in advance of the meeting, which is the numbers from the end of August. So I'm presenting the, the financial report that is consistent with the end of August today. Uh, so please disregard the report that is in your packet. actually lowers our actual numbers 
And so it actually shows up as a variance in, in our, so it doesn't mean that we are performing below on our marketing budget, it just means that the expenses from the previous administration that were money that was set aside from the previous administration to pay for expenses for the previous administration haven't actually come in yet. And so we are showing variances in the marketing area, especially, and then also travel expenses. So you can see that the travel expenses have also gone. The actuals have looked like they've gone down, and so the variance has gotten larger than most particular areas due to that better cruel than the previous administration. So that concludes the finance management report. Success. We have we have our goals for the district to meet in terms of growing new clubs, meeting our membership targets, meeting our educational goals. In terms of financial success, it would be achieving the the budget is set up to support those goals. So, so to support membership growth, to support club growth, to support those educational goals. So if we are meeting those goals and executing and, uh, and executing on the budget properly, we should be spending in those areas that we've identified in the budget. So we should be meeting our expenses, we should be meeting the income. Uh, so we should be on target on the income side, we should be on target on the expense side. Now if we are going over and above um, membership and our club growth, we should see additional income coming into the district because most of the income comes in through membership. So we should see additional income coming in. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to increase our expenses. That would mean that we will have additional money that's left over to the next administration if we have additional income coming in due to membership growth over and above what we were expecting. Are there any questions from the finance report? Thank you. This report is referred to the Audit Committee. Thank you, Brent. Thank you. I apologize for that. Next up, everyone can read, but I'm going to read it for you. Number 12. And that is the adoption of the reformation proposal. For the discussion of item 12 on the agenda, adoption of the reformation proposal, the procedure which was used for discussion at the international convention will be used here today. Six minutes will be allowed for questions following the presentation. Twelve minutes then will be allowed for the discussion with speakers alternating pros and cons. The chair <laughs> can extend the discussion once by an additional ten minutes at her discretion. The vote shall be taken immediately following the question and answer period and the discussion. Before we can have any of that, we need someone to present the reformation proposal. 
And that was going to be Joan Moore. But Joan Moore, as we know, is out of town. So in her absence, we will have the reformation proposal presented by distinguished Toastmaster Marilyn Smith. Welcome, Marilyn. chairperson of the Reformation Committee received a call on Thursday that there was a death in the family and suddenly had to leave. I'll do my best. In January of this year, the district received a letter from Toastmasters International reminding the district, and I do mean reminding, that once a district reaches a total of 240 clubs, they are required to submit a proposal to reform the district into a smaller body of clubs. Let me read a little bit of that letter that prompted the committee to convene. Dear District 30 leaders, I hope you are well and ready for your mid-year training exclamation point. <laughs> As you know, your district has more than 240 clubs. We urge you to form a committee so that in the best interest of Postmasters International and the clubs, you will reform and provide the benefits of Postmasters to more. But to skip through <coughs> down to the end, where it says, our hope is that you and your members will find the process exciting and enlightening. <laughs> and we are here to help you in any way that we can. Exciting and enlightening. Well, whenever I see an explanation point, I immediately become suspicious. What are you really setting me up for? I've spent the last 30 years working as a risk manager a forensic accountant and an auditor, I have lots of training in identifying the downside of everything. <laughs> the upside is why I'm here at Toastmasters, to get a little education on that part. I did not see the possibilities. Our district director appointed a chair for the reformation committee, which I believe the requirement was that it be a past district governor. And that individual then selected a committee of representation from each of the then divisions. There were eight divisions at the time. We started meeting in March. We arrived at the scene of the meeting, eight very angry people. <laughs> Exciting and enlightening. <laughs> I still did not see the possibilities. <laughs> we sat at that meeting and we hashed out all of the things that each of us felt were reasons not to reform the committee. It's a very frightening thing to change something that you become comfortable with, even if it has problems, even if we don't even know it has problems. Change is a little bit different. We were not seeing the possibilities. I was not excited, and I was not yet enlightened. <laughs> Having spent four and a half hours hashing out all the negatives and the reasons why, don't touch District 30, we're fine the way we are. We convened three weeks later again to explore the possibilities. We sat around and we went through every reason why we did not feel that it was a good reason to reform the committee. And then we started to see reasons why it would be helpful. You have a list of frequently asked questions uh, that try to target the highlights of the big parts of the reformation. And one of the things that this letter did not tell us was, 
I think if they had told us exactly what they wanted to say, it would say, Dear District 30 leaders, since 2007, we have been telling you you needed to reform the district. You have been ignoring our letters for several years, and the day of reckoning is upon you. <laughs> you will go into a room, and you will come out with a proposal that is in the best interest of all your club, or we will do it for you. <laughs> we began to see the possibilities. <laughs> Now, I believe you have a copy of the proposal. I have some. It took a really long time to come up with this proposal. And Toastmasters International actually has a few protocols that they would like everyone to follow in terms of deciding which clubs will be peeled off into a new district and which ones will remain in the existing district. One of those rules is that each district at the end should have at least 100 clubs, a minimum of 100 clubs. <laughs> and according to the proposal that is in front of you, that's also been posted on the District 30 website along with the frequently asked questions, <coughs> the proposal is to divide the district with 111 clubs on one side and 138 clubs on the other side of North Avenue. The Oak District which will retain the District 30 designation, will consist of divisions A, D, E, N, and W. And let me remind you that W is a relatively new division. The new district, whatever name Toastmasters International decides to give it, will consist of divisions B, as in Baker, C, F, in S. And when I look at this, that new district actually is comprised of the newer divisions. When I joined Toastmasters, there were only four divisions. And I'm not that old. <laughs> when we started the reformation committee discussions, there were only eight divisions. As you see from today's contest, we now have nine divisions. And at the speed of growth that District 30 is enjoying, we will soon exceed the numbers that we have today and I anticipate that sometime in the near future we will need to reform again. However, remember, the mission of Toastmasters International is to spread the joy of Toastmasters <laughs> to all the world. <laughs> and this is a good way to do that. I'll take questions. Actually, to accept the Reformation proposal presented by the Reformation Committee. The Chair recognizes... Bill Morrell, Area 25 Director. I move that the District Council accepts the report of the Reformation Committee. Is there... There are so many seconds. I didn't see the first one that went up, so be honest. There's a second. The chair recognizes. Chairman Sam Brown, Northwest District Director, and I stuck in the motion to accept the proposal. Accept the, 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 the report. Yes. The report. Now, I gave the instructions earlier, what we were going to do. Are there any questions? Because we will have six minutes of questions. No questions? Marilyn wants to share the map. I just wanted to let you know, if you haven't had a chance to take a look at the map, it will be on display throughout the conference near the credentials desk. And trust me when I tell you that the colors create an optical illusion that the newer district is smaller than the older one. But it's the colors. They're about the same size. But this will be posted and available to you. If you haven't had a chance to look at District 30's website and take a look at the map. And also remind you that this is 
as of June 30th of 2015, it will be redrawn after the next club realignment just before this is submitted to international court. Now, since there were no questions, the chair recognizes Dale Obrachta from the Oral Park Toastmasters. I just a basic question. Why am I informed? Sorry. <laughs> Dale Obrachta, Oral Park Toastmasters. Just one question. Since this pool was proposed or actually mandated, by Postmasters International in 2007. How come it's eight years later now that we're actually starting to do the division? Well, I'm only guessing because I was not a member of the Executive Council in 2007. In fact, I don't think I joined Postmasters until 2008. However, the administration at that time most likely felt just as angry as I did when I saw the letter and chose to ignore it and pass it on to the next administration who did the same thing and the same thing until finally the day of reckoning is upon us. Chair recognizes. As the person who is district governor, I my microphone. Microphone. Hi, hi. My voice doesn't carry? Oh. Oh. As the district governor of 2006-2007, I'm thinking there's a little confusion about dates. TI did not send us until January 2015, 2015, uh, earlier this year. There was nothing about this going on in 2007. Not 2006, 2007, 2007, 2008, and 2008, 2009. I, I don't believe World Headquarters gave any instructions or even suggestions about reformation at that time. It's my understanding that the district was contacted. Okay. Doesn't affect our proposal. No, it does. No. <laughs> Chair recognizes. Charles Brooks, CP of Education for the South Suburban and Past District Governor 2003 2004. Postmaster International has been encouraging District 30 to grow larger and split. As it was reported, the district has to come to 240 clubs. We were not at 240 clubs in 2007, 2008. So it was not necessary to do it. Now, we're there. So this is the appropriate time. When I was district governor, we had 121 clubs. We have doubled that in 12 years. As you said earlier, this is going to happen sooner than it did this time. It took 12 years to get here. It won't take that long. So we may be doing this again. Get used to it. It only helps us develop more leaders. What's the question? Discussion. And as I mentioned earlier, the chair recognizes, which she didn't see. <laughs> yeah, the law area director, South 56. Could we have those numbers again for the proposed District 30 and the District 30 South potentially? The numbers of the clubs in each? 138 in the old district, 111 clubs in the new district. And those numbers are as of close of business June 30th of 2015. They may, they may be different by the time this proposal is executed. Thank you. Chair recognizes your ballot. Do you have a, show your ballot please. Kate Webster, VP Membership, Windy City Professional Speaking Club. In the discussions that you all had, and I'm grateful for all that work that you did, were there any concerns that came up 
around the division of racial and ethnic mixes. Because Toastmasters is incredibly diverse, and I was just wondering if there was a discussion around that being retained um, with that separation. Toastmasters is also a not-for-profit, and we open the benefits of Toastmasters to all races with no concern whatsoever about, you know, ethnicity. So no, we did not discuss uh, race or ethnicity in terms of that. We merely looked at clubs and how far our members would have to travel to participate in Toastmasters events, and how far our leaders would have to travel, and how many clubs or members our prospective leaders would have to serve, given the geographical confines of the district. <coughs> The chair recognizes, and please state your name when you get up to the mic for the benefit of the minutes, please, and for everyone to know who you are. Dennis Timko, President, Career Communicators. First of all, I'd like to start by commending our district director for her sharing information with the group so we are all informed on the reformation proposal and thank the committee for all their work. Second is that you send information out just so we're all on the same page. Whenever you propose a change, you have to look at execution and whether we decide to approve or disapprove. Can you explain and confirm our understanding of what the <coughs> implementation will this take, the timetable, et cetera? That would be very helpful because as we implement the change, we have to know how it's going to play out. And I think that will be helpful to discuss. Thank you. I'd like to ask uh, Mike Rafferty to help us with that question. He has a lot more information and he's had some experience with these and he has memorized that timeline. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Assuming approval today, we would at the next spring conference elect a district director two club growth directors and two program quality directors to have a district quintet rather than a district trio for the 2016-2017 year. That would be one year with five district leaders. The actual reformation would go into effect July 1, 2017 on that schedule. A year and a half or so from now. Are there any other questions? The chair recognizes Peter Bria, former of our Toastmasters. And assuming we approve the proposal to split the clubs in half, will each have, have their own, uh, own district conferences? Yes, we will. And we can visit each other. Mike Rafferty can speak to this because we had a conference call last week and Mike made a very good analogy. Stand up, if you will, Mike, and come to the mic, Mike, <laughs> and share that birthing story. Birthing. Oh, yes. So, <laughs> an area I'm not so familiar with. <laughs> but, in short, you want to think of this not as a divorce. Some people think of this as a divorce. We're separating. Us and them. Instead, think of it as giving birth. What having a child? District 30 was born just that way from District 8, around the St. Louis area now. District 54, the rest of Northern Illinois, was born just that way from District 30 <coughs> back in 1956. And now it continues. We give birth to another district. And in a few more years, if we keep building new clubs and growing, will give birth to yet another district. There are two or three districts every year around the world out of 90 odd districts that go through this reformation process. It is a very well known and established procedure on a global basis by world headquarters and District 30 is the next in line to do that, to give birth. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Not only will the new district have 
its own contests. That doubles the, amount, the number of opportunities that today's contestants would have had to compete at a district level contest. Again, thanks to the geographical nature of the Chicagoland area, each, because each district would have its own contest, there are two opportunities. One of our co uh, competitors today was a member of four clubs. And just think, if two of his clubs fell on the other side of the new district, that's two opportunities for that individual to compete at a district level. And let me just add, I don't know if you know Rudy Segovia. Any of you know Rudy Segovia? Yes. Rudy does just that. Both districts. Our, our question and answer period has ended. It actually ended a while ago. I would like to thank distinguished Toastmaster Marilyn Smith for presenting the Reformation proposal. Now I'd like to know, is there any discussion, pros and cons, for 12 minutes, is there any discussion, pros, cons? Chair recognizes. Head of District Director Bill Morrell, Area Director for C25. Marilyn told us about enlightenment. And we had a lot of light as well as a little bit of heat a month ago as we debated this at our deck. And there's three things I want to say as a positive statement about this report. Number one, there was a number of guidelines that Marilyn mentioned that were given to us by Toastmasters International. One of those was as much as possible to follow along county lines. And that was followed, as well as several other guidelines by Toastmasters International. Number two, as getting guidance, they sent that report to Toastmasters International to get their preliminary feedback. They were delighted in this proposal. And one of the reasons they were delighted is we considered several different ideas. I believe if you look at the report, there's six to seven different ideas that we're talking about. Some of those had already been talked to in our clubs and among our leaders, as well as some things that we had not thought about. And finally, the third thing that I saw, just like what Mike Rafferty said about giving birth, that last suggestion report talks about where we can go in the future. We can go from two districts today with this reformation to three districts in a short time frame as we continue to build our leadership and communication and teamwork skills. I think this report is an excellent report and I'm strongly in favor of you accepting it. Chair recognizes we're going we're alternating remember four against that was a four the chair recognizes <coughs> Dale O'Brockton I, I want to point out one thing we've we've let me turn the mic around so I can actually see people. Uh, when we just actually approved a budget, and to my knowledge, I don't think we even have a new budget set up. We actually have a surplus. So if we say, yes, let's go for this, I think we should have a financial budget or at least a plan for splitting up the money so the new groups actually have a financial budget. Because right now, we haven't addressed that. All we've done is approved a budget. But that new budget doesn't focus on funding the new, new, new group. So that is one of the pros or the cons that I see with this approving it today is because we haven't thought out the financial aspect. Thank you, thank, thank you Dale. I'm going, I'm going to ask Mike Rafferty to speak to that please. <laughs> well, I'm not too far away at least. So as I've stated, TI goes through this process with two or three districts every year at this point with 90 odd districts around the world. There's a well-defined process for the finances. The reformation itself shouldn't really cost anything. It's paperwork. 
but the money is handled by splitting it in proportion to the members in the two districts. For the 2000, for this year, the budget we just approved, no change at all. For next year, 2016, 2017, again, no change at all. We're still working as one district for another year. At June 30th, 2017, the number of members in each district of the two districts will be counted up, the funds available divided in proportion to those members in those two districts. And those two districts will have their own budget for the 2017-18 year, the first year that they operate separately. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. The chair recognizes. I figured I'd come to the mic. Uh, Matt Personette, Area 34 Director. As a positive, looking at District 30's mission statement, we build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. I see that this split helps support that mission and furthers opportunities for people to rise up and support the new members in their club. So I'm, I'm fully behind this. Do we have someone to the chair recognizes? Bye. Callaway, Area 12 County Director. As, as the, at least the participant in some of the heat that was reported about the last deck meeting, I'll just go on record and, and say my feeling about it is that Chicago Loop area is a very large portion of the new district. In fact, with 75 clubs and a minimum in the 100 slightly plus area, it's the major portion of the new district. And so my concern throughout and what I expressed or attempted to express at the last meeting was, it, the, given the trajectory and the rate of growth, by the time this, by the time any plan actually gets implemented, I believe that Chicago Loop will have achieved the critical mass necessary to be its own district. And so that was my thought. And my reasoning is that the reason it's such a large district is primarily corporate clubs who meet during the day and whose members are coming to the Loop from both the north and the south. As such, <coughs> I believe that if the plan as currently implemented takes place, what will happen is that many of the members make up the loop clubs, will, if they don't already, join local clubs on the north, at least that portion, and kind of shift their participation in that direction because if you live way north, it's very difficult to meet in the south. Whereas everyone could, who goes to the loop anyway for work can easily go to the loop a few extra times for participation in an event of this nature. Their train passes apply and so forth. So that was just. Thank you. Thank you, Al. The chair recognizes. Well, as Frank has to say, I really don't need a mic. The Shonda Mills and South Division Director, I was also one of the people that was against it. However, I wrote down my notes, I was ready for this. George Bernard Shaw said, Possib progress is impossible without change, and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. The Reformation is a change because of progress. We have over 240 clubs. Nicholas Katankasis said, since we cannot change the reality, let us change the eyes in which we see the reality. Here's the reality. Not passing this reformation does not negate District 30 is not going to split. Or not negate that District 30 is going to split. It's going to happen. The focus now should be to pass this proposal. The committee has recommended the changes and submit to TI. 
and be proactive on how both districts will, will remain successful after the split. Instead of allowing TI to be forced on District 30, that we will not have a say on how the outcome will recall, uh, occur. Remember, the ultimate goal is to focus on servicing the members and having two smaller districts will allow this goal to be achieved. This is why I am voting my three votes for this reformation proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Is there any further discussion? Is there a motion? We got the motion. Oh, that's right, we did. The motion is that the district council accepts the report of the Reformation Committee. So a yes vote to a vote to accept the report. A yes vote is a vote to accept the report. Everyone has Someone just said it has to be paper. We can do, excuse me? I someone's hands were flailing back there. The chair recognizes Al Kelly. Is discussion closed? Our time is up, we had 12 That's fine. minutes. That's fine. I, I was. Uh, I'm not clear on on the what we would be voting on. So we could please have that restated. Yeah. Yeah. The split. We're voting on the reformation proposal. A yes vote. So is we're not. We're not voting to accept the report. We're voting. We're voting yes or no in favor of the split as proposed in the report. Yes. Is that correct? Thank you. No. I heard no. Hold on, please. <laughs> We are voting to accept the report that effectively does what you just said, Al. The report was given by Marilyn Smith. And now we're voting to accept the report on the reformation proposal. The, I'm sorry, the chair recognizes. I, I'm very sorry. I, so if we accept the report, then we'll leave, will there be another vote? to uh, be in pro or against the proposal itself? This is the vote for pro or against. Thank you. You're welcome. And, yes. We're going to do a voice, a voice vote. The chair recognizes. <coughs> Lunches in 10 minutes. <laughs> we're not between lunch, so thank you, Madam District Director. Clown Knapp, West 72 Director. I think what's causing some confusion is the vote now to accept the report, and then the report will be accepted, and then next there will be a vote. That's why there's this paper item at the bottom that says Reformation, yes or no. I think that's where the confusion is coming from. We could you thank you, Kyle. We could use those, but in the essence of time. And because I'm sure your minds are where they are, I think, and Mike Rafferty agrees, a voice count will do. If it is unclear, then we will move to another option. Pardon? Yes, Mike. And this will be the only vote on reformation, and it will be put into effect as a result of this vote. Yeah. It's not very good. The chair recognizes Al. Just briefly, if it's a voice vote, how does someone such as the distinguished member of a moment ago who plans to vote her three proxies, how do, how do three proxies get voted in a voice We're going to, oh, when I say voice, I'm sorry, we're going to count them. All the eyes are going to hold up your ballots. If you have one, you'll hold up one. If you have two, you'll hold up two. And three, three. Chair recognizes. I would that the procedure be to have a voice, I, they vote first. Okay. And if it is 
obviously one-sided, then the more complicated other votes would not be needed. If right. it seems close in any way, I mean, everyone has one, two, or three votes, and that's it. There's no one with 150 votes and someone else with one. <laughs> All those in favor of accepting, I'm sorry, accepting the reformation proposal, say aye. 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 All those opposed, say no. No. <laughs> the ayes have it, the motion passes. district director want to thank you. It's not easy what you just went through. And I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. My knees have been knocking ever since 11.15. <laughs> so thank you. And I know you want to go to lunch on time, which is noon. Hold on, please. lunch even if you don't. <laughs> We're actually going to skip the committee reports. If <laughs> Guess what? There were no PowerPoints. There weren't. You know where we are. If you need us, if you have any questions, you know how to get us. If you have any questions about any of these reports. New business was to be submitted to me by October 30th. I did not receive any new business in writing, so there was none. Our next announcement, announcement, our next district council meeting is on April 30th at the Holiday Inn in Skokie, Illinois. With that, this business meeting is adjourned. Yeah.